Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Oreo Podcast. I am Tommy Wilford, here with my friends Jeremiah and Isaac. And, yo, Jeremiah, do you want to introduce our guest today, man? Sure, why not? Um, <laughs> hi, Jeremiah. Um, so we have, um, I'd say one of the, 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 the important, someone on the more important side of, of the guest world. Um, we have my man, Paul. Well, say hello, Paul, Mr. Paul. Hello, everybody. Oh, my God. We went through this already. Okay. <laughs> I went through this with Tommy. So, Jeremiah, Isaac, you you don't have any strikes yet. So, I'll let that slide. Let's go. My name is Paul. My name is not Mr. Paul. My <laughs> mama did not name me Mr. Paul. My name is Paul. Oh, wow. Please don't be Paul. Well, Please let don't me just, be Paul. I, I think the reason we're saying that is because you played George Washington in, like, the hottest show on Broadway and off Broadway, like it's the hottest show. So we can't just call it. you Paul. Like you, uh, you're, you're, abso- you're George Washington. Yeah, listen, you absolutely can and you absolutely must because <laughs> that's part of why I'm doing this. Look, if I was all that, if I was all that, or, or if I saw myself as all that, I wouldn't be here right now. True. So. true. <laughs> well, how's it going? How, how are you doing amidst, amidst these, you know, really rough times in our country and the world? Yeah, well, you know, actually, I've gone through a little bit of guilt, but I, I let that go. Uh, I haven't had such a difficult time. Um, I've been in Ireland for the past three months, and mm. I just got back to the States. I'm working on a, a television project. I'm writing about Frederick Douglass and a couple other TV projects. And um, I rewrote my new musical and workshops it overseas, mm. bringing it back, ready to get that going. Um, so, uh, and I'm in rehearsals now for uh, two Shakespeare shows. Uh, that we're going to do is radio plays here in Chicago. That's amazing. I do uh, want to ask so you, you're a creator <laughs> too. You're not just, you know, a, a, a performer in Hamilton. You're also a creator. I saw you had shows that went up at the Goodman Theater in Chicago, right? Yeah, the Goodman Chicago, yeah, Mark I mean, like, LA. I have one going up in Memphis right now. Right. So you're, a, you're an innovating, you know, creator. How do you balance being in a show as big as that and also finding time to create your own projects? Well, lucky for me, um, my creating of projects happened with what well, was in the works before Hamilton came along. So as crazy as this sounds, uh, Hamilton is a very stabilizing thing where I know what I'm doing eight times a week for a certain time of the day. I know what I have to do to prepare for it. So when you have to get in such a routine and a regimen, you, you, your, your time is very valuable when you have any bit of free time. So I, I use it. So I don't have much time that's free, but, you know, I'll worry about that at some other point. I like to stay busy. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What is it? What's your schedule like? Because I know you're, it's different than being on Broadway where it's like you're in the city and it's just at the theater eight times a week. You guys are traveling. So Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Like? I'm, when we're on tour, it's, uh... So let, let's start, like, the day you go to a new city. So Monday is the travel day, and you I, – I, I tend to uh, – if I can get there by car, I will rent a car and drive. I have a – it's funny. Before COVID even happened, I have a thing about traveling with a bunch of people on an enclosed airplane or enclosed bus. Right. Mm-hmm. And, well, and, and, you know, I, actually, I love to fly, but um, also I see this cast all the time. Right. So when I have one day that I don't, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, when I love them. I love them. them. <laughs> if they hear this, I, you know, I, they know what I'm talking about actually because we all try to find time to do our own thing. Right. So um, on that travel day, I like to, you know, the hair and makeup. Uh, the, the the woman who's the head of the hair and wig department, Denise, will get a rent a car and just try just on a road trip with one other person. You know, it's a right. nice, you know. So I do that, and then you get to the new city. Uh, you have to find the grocery store. You have to get unpacked. You have to settle into whatever your new situation is. A lot of people just do the hotel because they're, it's just, it just makes their life easier. Yeah. But some of us like to have a kitchen, and so you find your Airbnb, you get unpacked, find the grocery store, try to relax a little bit, and the next day you have to go in and check the show at 4 o'clock, and you're on Tuesday night. So right. you you – <laughs> you go right into it. So then let's say we're there for two months. You are getting used to this new place. It takes about a week before you don't wake up and forget where you are. 
So you get settled, and then right when you get kind of in there, like, I found my coffee shop, I found my vegetarian cafe, I found my this, I found that, I am at the gym, I found a little, I got the deal for, you know, to sign up for the gym for only two months they gave me. We worked it out. Just when you're getting settled, it's time to pack up and go to the next place. Right. So, so outside of that, your schedule is pretty much the same as Broadway mm-hmm. as far as eight shows a week and all of that. Um, so the actual being at work, but we have a different crew in every city as well. So you have to get used to a different person who's helping you with your quick change, a different person who is hands you your props. Some people in some cities want to have conversations with you at the time when you really don't have a chance to talk. So, (laughs) you know, you have to just, you have to establish those relationships quickly. And, um, that, that might be something that's different from Broadway. I'd have to talk to some of the Broadway people, but I think they get very close with their dressers and right. with their, I get the, yeah, I think they develop a close relationships over the years. And once you, once you leave the city, do you go home for a little bit or is it right next to Memphis to Chicago, Chicago to Detroit? Or is it no, like- no, 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 you go to the next city. Oh, wow. And how long so is that last, tour? Uh, how long is the tour? How long are you out on the road? Well, the tour goes as long as they want it to go. Uh, so the tour is a thing of itself that the production, that producers have a tour out on the road. Our contracts are on varying lengths depending on, you know, hey, if you ask for certain perks, they might say, well, if you want that, then we want you to uh, sign that contract for longer. Mm-hmm. So that there's some, you know, bartering and, and deal making going on. So I don't, I don't know. Everyone's different. Everyone's different. Right. Yeah. How long do you see yourself being with Hamilton? Like I said, you're a creator. So how long do you see yourself being so invested into one production eight eight times a week? Well, you know, I'm invested, and I feel I feel that this break that we didn't want mm-hmm. has given me time to rest. It's rested my voice actually a little longer than I wanted to have a rest. Mm. I, I'll say we were we were not at a we were not at a breaking point, but Hamilton is hard and. When we thought COVID would be two weeks, I have to say, some of us were like, eh, I'll take two weeks off. Right, right. Remember when, remember when we all thought this was just going to be a couple of weeks? Yeah. Exactly. Because I got to say, <laughs> Jeremiah, Jeremiah and I had just auditioned for uh, a production of Frozen. Uh, and we both got uh, cast in it. And uh-huh. we were like, yay, we both in the show. Yes, we're going to get to know each other more. And then it was like, the stage manager was like, yeah, we'll see you in like next Saturday because this little thing is going on and it was like yeah, yeah. we'll see you in 2023 and now we're like <laughs> we're not even going to be old enough to do that show anymore we'll be somewhere else stocking well, you'll, be ready, you'll be ready to do Hamilton by then oh yeah let's go you know uh, maybe okay. by that time maybe that, by, by that I'm time you'll have one of your shows on Broadway yeah. and we'll just rotate yeah exactly back. exactly but uh, I plan on I, I owe them six more months on my contract from when we stopped mm-hmm. And then I was planning to sign for another year. I mean, you know, th- this this year off has not really changed how I feel about that. Mm. But it's just that I've also been very productive with my writing and new projects. So we will just see. But I, I definitely plan on yeah. I'm fulfilling my contract. You, you have to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Jeremiah, you got anything? I do. Um, I have a couple things. Uh, okay. Uh, let's get on. Let's get back on the topic of, of your own, like, creative, you know, mindset and such. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you said you had the thing, uh, the thing of the show on Cedric Douglas. Can you tell me a bit more about that? If you can at all, I don't know. If you're yeah. just now thinking of, you know, if you had it for a little minute, Cedric Douglas. Oh no, it's in all the papers in Ireland, and I've done. Oh, on TV, uh, TV news spots about it. So, it, it, so Frederick Douglass, not for you guys, you probably either know or have looked it up. Uh, he was a slave in the 1840s, and he he ran north, and he escaped, uh, married a free woman, a black woman named Anna Douglas, and that did. That didn't make him technically free. He just was, once you were up north, they sort of wouldn't go up there and bother to try and catch you. That was just kind of the way it was back then. But he taught himself how to read and write, and he he wrote an autobiography that told, that told the whole world the true horror of slavery, what they did to people. Because people don't really know. People didn't really understand the level of torture and horror 
you know, and rape and selling your family away from you and what they, what they've done to black people over the years. So when that book came out, he, he caused a sensation and he caused a problem for himself and his wife and his advisor said, look, they're going to try to kill you. So you need to leave. You need to leave. You need to, you need to run. So they put him, there was nowhere in the United States he could run. So they put him on the boat to Ireland. And now he finds himself all alone on a ship going overseas. It's a three week journey to a land that he's never been. He doesn't know what to expect. I mean, he's been told that they sent letters ahead and these people are going to take look after him and it's going to be okay, but it's going to be an island full of white people. So he has no idea yeah. what, what it's really going to be. And he ended up not only he was supposed to stay for four days and he stayed for four months mm. because he became mm. such a sensation from the speeches he was giving and he became an international star. Um, this yeah. was right at the time that photography was becoming a thing and he became the most photographed human in the 19th century, oh, wow. not man, not black man, not American, the most photographed mm. person. Yeah. And wow, when you look at the photographs of him at that age, he's not smiling. He mm. never smiled. He was he was the, he was the original social media influencer. <laughs> you know, he was the original selfie. He was very you know <laughs> to his image, and he said, "I'm not going to perpetrate this image of the happy slave. Right. People don't understand. There's nothing happy about it." And so all of his images are, whew, when you look at him, he's looking like he's ready to knock you out. Right. And I'm very fortunate. I was able to present my first episode script to Frederick Douglass's great, great, great grandson. Mm. Wow. Who uh, I just want, I needed his approval or I couldn't go forward. So not only did he approve, he went into a creative partnership with me on it. He really likes the tape, the way I'm doing it. And his daughter, who is Frederick's, of course, great, 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 great granddaughter, um, she's singing on a, some songs I wrote about, uh, for the piece. Wow. So I got Frederick's actual blood. Yeah, that's crazy. Nice. That's pretty exciting. Are you playing? Are you playing yeah. Frederick Douglass? Are you gonna hide that out? At the moment, I am, but you know, I'm one yes. of those. I'm in the, you know, in the same way that Lynn played Hamilton. Yeah. And, you know, some people write things and they play it. At the moment, I am, but um, you know, my focus, my focus isn't on that because it's way too early to do that. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. script's written, and um, um. I got some other projects I'm working on too right. that I, I, I'm, I'm planning to be in. So we'll see if I have time for all this. Well, you mentioned yeah. Lynn. I got to ask because we're all theater geeks as well. Yeah. How yeah. cool is Lynn Miranda in person? That's a question I was just dying to spit out. He's very cool. You know, listen, I, I can't speak on him like on a day to day level because he's my boss and I only met him in the sense where he would come and visit the cast and mm -hmm. say hello, check on us. Uh, give us a nice little, you know, he, he, he would, he would he, uh, do a nice little night out after the show for right. us all. Yeah. So we could kind of hang out a little bit and, and everybody would find some time to chat with him. Um, but what he did do, I was working on my musical in Ireland and he read it. Oh, I, wow. I emailed it to oh, him. Okay. The music and I know he's busy. So that was a nice, it was nice enough of him to read it and listen to the music. But then he called me when I was in Ireland and no. said, Hey, let, let's have a talk. And he gave me like 90 minutes of notes and, a, it, it, a, you know, the way I was trying to write as <laughs> he really does, uh, talk as fast as you think. So I, my hand was just trying to like write mm. as fast as Yeah, you were just writing so fast. You're like, oh, slow down, slow down, slow down, buddy. <laughs> but you know, you don't, you don't say that to him. You just like, just, just go as fast. Just give me all you got. And the way his mind works is not about pleasantries and, and wasting time saying, oh, you're so good. He was just right to the yeah, anal analyzing like, it, right. right to the analyst analysis. So I, I was very fortunate to get that because Lynn has also been able to be in some rooms with some big musical theater giants because right. of his career. Yeah. So some of the kind of, some of the kind of like structural foundational things about writing a good musical, even though the best musical writers will then take those rules and break them, mm -hmm. you still have to know what those rules are. Right. You know, even if you decide, like, well, I don't have to do that. I'm going to do this. But still, you, 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 you have to know, you have what, to know what the foundation yeah. is. Right. right. And so he gave me some really good pointers um, that I will 
be forever thankful to him for that. So yes, he's as cool as in my eyes, you know. He didn't have to do that for me and that was very nice of him to do. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you when you're doing Hamilton, when you're on stage yeah. doing the show, what's that one yeah. song or one number that is just like physically taxing or vocally taxing? Well, I'll tell you, it's not the one you think. One last time is not the is not the one. Mm. That's the one that I really am. You know, it's Act Two. I'm very warm by then. <laughs> I I'm 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 in a very good like settled place in the show. I know where my voice is. It actually guns and ships. Mm. And it's, it's that mm. transition, that transition thing I sing into history. Right. When I when I pass the letter yeah. and I'm on the road, I'm rotating uh, on the table. Yeah. And it ends with Alexander. Mm. You you know that's fairly early in the show. Right. And I haven't sung much. I've done right hand man, but that's not singing. Right. And I've Sting. sung in some ensemble stuff, right. and then I'm out there suddenly, and I have to, you know, that that's sort of a transition moment in the show. We're moving from, you've established all the lead characters, you've done, you know, My Shot, you've done Skylar Sisters, you've done Helpless, you've done Satisfied, you've done Right Hand Man, so you've met everyone, right. you've done Wait For It, you know, you know, okay, you've met all the, and now that song, going into history, has its eyes on you, and now we're going into Yorktown. Right. Oh, wow. Now we're going. Now we're going into the heart of the second half of Act One. So I felt a lot of pressure around it too, and I think I just kind of did that to myself. But um, you know, now now at least I know going into it, I've learned some tricks, some things to calm myself down, some things to remind myself that even if you crack, it's not the end of the world. Right. You know, just just all these things. You 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 know, you make yourself think that oh my God, this is the most important thing in the world. But there's mm. kids in cages, you know. Yeah, exactly. And let me. I want to so, ask you a question because people oftentimes um, they see Hamilton and they see some of the current things that are happening in the world. And they hold those things up together. But I know yeah. you, I mean, in this conversation, you mentioned Frederick Douglass, and you obviously have a lot of knowledge about, you know, the great horrific things that happened to our people and just people across the board and throughout the scope of history. So when people look at Hamilton and, and they, like, they compare it or they see it as some beacon of light, what, how, do you, how do you see that as a creator saying, like, hmm, this is some credence that should be given or maybe should not be given or some comparisons that are you know, not really valid. You know, I think because I'm in it, there's a side of me that has to has to say to myself, don't forget, it's just a play. Right. But, but, uh, it, but, but I have such a reverence for art and art making that I absolutely I go full in. If somebody wants to say Hamilton has moved them and changed them and, uh, you know, uh, lifted up their awareness to research this or study that or, or if they get mad about it because they're like, well, the truth is there were Schuyler brothers or, mm -hmm. you know, these are slave owners and you want to have that conversation, fine, let's have it because that means the art has worked on you. Yes. I, I, don't, I don't shy away from those talk conversations and if you want to be mad, okay, stay mad. That's mm -hmm. whatever, but go do the work then and write something else mm. that, count, that counters it because Lynn has put a lot of hard work into Hamilton and it has brought history up from the dust and yeah. into our bodies and onto the stage so I, I, you know let, let's have the discussion if people want to have it but art is the most important thing art is what's going to save us if we will let ourselves be saved right. I'm not sure we're going to let ourselves be saved sadly <laughs> but um, <laughs> But uh, let's hope that we do make the decision to love each other and and drop all of these things around gender and race and right. sex, you know, the, all these constructed things. Let's hope that we can start going in that direction. It's, 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 it's a long way to go. But if you think about it, it's not that we're going to new territory. It's that we just have to take the turn off the highway mm. and turn around and go back to what we were before. Wow. All of these things like phones and, you know, all of these things, you know, we, we once were, we once knew that there were eight genders, nine genders, right. infinite genders. We mm -hmm. once knew that there's no such thing as heterosexual or homosexual or any of that. We once knew that. We once lived that way hundreds yeah. of thousands of years ago. And so hopefully okay. we can get back to that. Um, it's, to me, it's not that we're going to new territory. We need to, 
go super, super, super old school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we need to. Yeah. Well, that, and that's and that's one thing about it. I feel like uh, you said it. You know, art will save us, and I think like theater, especially because we're all in the same room and we're seeing the same story. It allows us like to have these serious conversations with like a little yeah. laugh. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, 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 this is cool. This is awesome. We're like, they're rapping or they're singing or they're doing something comedic. And it's like, okay, but it's also serious. So that allows us to have this hard conversation. Right. Or it puts you in a comfortable enough place where you can cry in front of someone. Right. You know, and, you know, art also reminds you that you always are learning. I was in rehearsal today. I'm playing Festy in Twelfth Night right now, Chicago Shakespeare Theater. And, you know, it's pretty clear to everyone in the show that I'm the only one that's never done Shakespeare before. Mm. But <laughs> rather than let that work against me, I let it work for me that I'm bringing something fresh. You all are, tr- you know, doing what you're used to doing. Yeah. And I'm bringing a very fresh take. So I was talking to the director and she said, you know, at the top of the play, Festy returns from being away for a year, traveling the world. And I'm like, oh, well, where was he? And she said, well, that's up to you. Mm. So we started talking about um, her, our favorite places in the world. And she started talking about Mykonos. Do you guys know where that is? No, sir. Mykonos. What'd you call me? <laughs> no, Mr. George Washington. <laughs> yo, yo, he's, yo, he's, 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 he's going to leave on us. Why'd he say that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Mr. Paul okay, has left the chat. I mean, Paul has left the chat. Oh, wow. Okay, there we go. Just call me Paul. <laughs> so, Mykonos is an island in Greece. Mm. And as you know, Greece is the home of, you know, art and, well, Actually, yeah. Africa and Ethiopia is, but that's another conversation that can open up. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so yeah. she was talking about Greece and the theater and art and all the things of ancient, you know, Greek plays and stuff. Mm. And she said, from Mykonos, this one island, there's an island, a short ferry boat right away called Delos. And thousands of years ago, that's where all the artists went to hang out and make plays and make paintings and, mm. you know, just create artistic stuff. And some pirates came along one day, invaded the island, and murdered all 3,000 people that were on the island. Wow. wow. And, and then just left. Like, they were just, they just did it just because they were artists and they were free thinking and free living people and they just killed them to this day. Now that was thousands of years ago, thousands to this day. You can take a ferry boat ride out to this Island, but no one is allowed to live there. You can spend the day there, but then you have to leave. And if, and as you go around the Island, you can see because it's left the way it was mm. 3000 years ago. So you see like, these cool mosaic floors and then over there you'll see like a stage and the curtain still swinging swaying in the breeze wow. I mean and I said to her I said I think that's where my character I think he just went there and sat mm. there for a year because he uh, there was a death in the family so he left because he just couldn't handle it Right. Oh. and I said yeah maybe he just went there and meditated around art and mm-hmm. how, Reflecting. how people get so threatened by art that mm. they some people go as far as to kill people. Yeah, and they're scared. Uh, they're scared to let new ideas in. They're scared to be innovating and 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 new. Well, they just want to well, and they're, and well they're afraid of their, they're afraid of their own beating heart. They're afraid of what they would do if somebody hugged them. You know, mm. <laughs> that's deep. Especially guys, they're just afraid of they're just afraid of so many things. It's ridiculous. So um, I, I say all that just to say that. As much as you all think, like at the top of this conversation, you were like, "Oh, you you want to? We want to call you Mister This, and you play this." I'm still learning things. Mm. I knew nothing about that, right? And today, today I became a different artist because I learned about this thing, and I, I got online and was looking up this island, and you know, like a little kid. Yeah. And so, so that's part of being an artist is also knowing that you don't never know everything. Guys, we need to take a trip to Chicago and see this this, this show. Like, for real though, I mean, are, you for, are you gonna pay for it? Well, no, 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 like, no, I'll go you pay. Well, no, no, it's co- it's COVID. We're doing it as a radio play, so you oh, can you it? can stream it. You'll oh. be able to listen. Oh, to it. never mind. And, and just... they've also done something uh a very original with it. I, it might be because I'm in it. I'm not sure. But <laughs> Festi, Festi is supposed to be like the um 
the jester, the court jester, uh, to, to the to the royal family. Yeah. But it's, you know, in those days, it wasn't like he's out there like in a clown suit. He mm-hmm. keeps more like he has a very high status, and his job is to just make the royals laugh and make sure philosophically they they stay emotionally balanced. Mm-hmm. It's more it's more like what he does because he he's got money, he's got status. Um, so they wrote four original songs. Wow. Which have never been done in oh. in this show. So I'm singing four original songs in the show. Crazy, that's amazing. How so I'll be able to get you the link and you can just listen to it. Yes, please do. And have there yeah. ever been times yeah. in 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 Hamilton where you had like a crazy or amazing experience or exchange of uh, of conversation with an audience member, like whether it be the stage door, backstage, that you can like off the top of your head think of. Uh, whew. I'm hoping one just pops into my head. Um, um, because mostly it's with the young people yeah. who, you know, like the young girl who's dressed as Eliza. You know how some of these kids dress like the characters. Oh, so I'm talking young, yeah. okay, young. I'm talking young, young. And um, I'll say to her like, "Oh, so you want to play Eliza?" And she'll look at me. I remember one, where were we? Somewhere in Florida. And she's just looking at me. And I said, so you don't want to play like you're dressed as Eliza? And she said, well, that's what my mom and dad dressed me as. (laughs) And I said, I said, but do you like Hamilton? She said, I love the show. And I said, so maybe you want to play like Burr or Alexander? She was like, she said, yeah. And I said, oh, well, next time come dressed as them because you don't have to. This whole thing about the girls have to do this and the boys have to do right. that. That's, you know that's not real, right? Exactly. And she was like, uh. So we kind of blew each other's minds for a few minutes. But I love having those conversations yeah. with the young lady. That's amazing. And, and, with, and with the young kid, the young guys who are always dressed in some military suit. And I'm like, hey, listen, if you want to play um, Angelica or Eliza, that's fine, too. Right. You know that, right? Open it up. Yeah. That's amazing. You can do what you want. You can do what you want. Okay. And, um, yeah. So those are my best conversations are with young people because they, and I mean younger than even you guys, because they, they don't have, they, it's not too late. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They, ha- they haven't been conditioned yet. <laughs> and you mentioned yeah. Florida. What's your favorite place to visit when you're out touring? That, I, that we've already been to? Yeah. Because we had Atlanta coming up, and I'm really upset that we didn't get to do that. But we'll get to do it. Uh, so the, out of the place, I have to say Philadelphia because um, oh, I, was I, I was able to get to New York pretty quickly if I needed to. Um, a lot of the things that happened in Hamilton that we say happened in New York actually happened in Philly. Mm. So I was able to go to the places like where James Madison's house was over there and the house where Hamilton had uh, Mariah Reynolds right. visiting him yeah. was over there. The, you know, a lot of things were there that you could go see. That that's where that happened. Things in the play. And do you feel like do you feel like any of your co stars inspire you in the sense of like their performance or their determination? Absolutely. I mean, you know, some of them have like <laughs> A couple of them, uh, you know, like our Angelica was the lead in Ragtime on Broadway. Oh, wow. And our Burr was, uh, oh, God, what's the lead guy in uh, Lion King? Uh, uh, he was Simba uh, in Lion King when he was much younger uh, for yeah. years. Wow. So just like, you know, I'm working with some people who <laughs> they, they know what it is to tour. They know what it is to be disciplined. They know what it is to, and I, you know, I frankly came from a world of, jazz and blues club singing so doing the same thing eight times in a row a week and then for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks it wasn't what i saw myself doing necessarily mm-hmm. so it was great to have them to learn a lot about like oh you know after the show you need to go home and go yeah. to sleep yeah i mean some the dancers can run around because you know, if you can handle it, you can handle it. But if you can't handle it, you have to be honest with yourself. Right. And you what, know, is, what uh, is your what is your after show like? Just complete tear down. Like when you're done with the show or two show day. Like what's your thing you do? Um, usually eat something. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, eat something like a meal meal. Even though it's late, but we're burning. Mm. You're still burning. You're sweating. So uh, it's okay. Uh, try to sleep in 
the next day. Mm. Um, try not to speak for about the first two or three hours that you're awake, and just start with water. Mm. Oh, so no. you get it. You get into a routine, and then you you know hit the gym. And then hit the gym. Uh, you hit, you don't hit it right. Uh, some people hit it right before the show. I hit it like around 11 a.m. and then hit it pretty hard, and then just try to relax during the day. Yeah. Get yourself together. If you have two shows, well, then you're trying to... If I have two shows, I use the first show as my workout. Mm, and then the next one, uh, like, you already warmed. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah I, now, 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 if you're writing this down, I didn't say warm up. You give 100%. <laughs> give I'm 100%. writing this down, trust me. This guy's in hand. You give 100% in your matinees. Just yeah. To the evening shows. But I'm just saying, I, I, instead of going to the gym at 10 a.m. and then doing a matinee, I mean, the mat, the show is a workout. Right. So I'll use yeah, that that very if I have two shows in a day, then that's my two a day. If I have one show at night, then I work out. So I do two workouts a day no matter what. Right. And do you still get nervous? I mean, you've done it so many times. Like, do you, because Jeremiah and I, we did something in a few, like in August or so, or October. And I was in the theater back, the community theater bathroom, like my hand was numb. And he's like, "You all right? Like it's time to go in." I'm like, "Yeah, I just can't feel my yeah. face. Like I'm gonna throw up." Do you still get that feeling, or is it just like, "Yeah, I'm doing this"? Um, no, not to the level of throwing up, but I get nervous because you feel the pressure mm. of Hamilton. You know, these people paid a lot of money to see this show, Thanks. and it's a responsibility and it's a but like I said I don't get nervous to like numb hands and throwing up mm -hmm. yeah Definitely. but I just get the, I get that healthy kind of butterflies I, to jump up and down like a boxer about to get in the ring yeah um it's a fight you know you can win so you know what moves you have to do but there are nights where you you know one time in Richmond Virginia I just flubbed a line in in um right hand man and it's really do? rough when you flub in your opening song. What do you, you know, do you when you? What do you do when you do that, when, that, when that happens? You just what do you do? Well, we. I come from Chicago, so I come from a long history of ensemble and improvisation, Second City type mm -hmm. improvs. And so, when I'm flubbing, I never sort of go blank. I say something. It just would be something that is so ridiculous and funny that the cast is ready to die laughing because they're like, "I can't believe you said that." Right. So I will say, I will say something. And so, the, my problem is, I have to try not to do that again the next show because. I get in this kind of like, uh, I psych myself out. Like, here comes that spot where I messed up in the last show. Mm. And then I'm like, I know the words. I know the words. I know what's coming up. How come I don't know the words? How come I don't know the words? Oh, God, I'm going to say that thing I said last night. So I have to, like, get out of that. Um, uh, some people, some people, I won't name names, uh, go completely blank when they flub and they just freeze and stop moving and stop talking. Which but is what, what happens, good though? Like, that's so crazy because I, when I say, when I saw Hamilton in the theater, like, there was no, there was no mess up, period. It was flawless. Oh, it's rare. Oh, believe me, it's rare. Okay. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's not like every night something happens. But, um, you know, when, when that thing does happen, it's rough because Hamilton's not the kind of show where you can pause and figure it out. It's, it, the train has left the station, you know? Yeah. And it moves yeah, it's very, like, fast paced. Yeah. yeah, and if you know, and you can't really help anybody either because it's that's not the way the show is structured. You can't give them their line because mm. it's going too fast. So you know, yeah. you just stare at them and they just you just hope they come back soon. And then if your line comes up, you just say it and keep going. And some people, I also won't name names, <laughs> when they forget, they just start like singing syllables, just like gibberish. Wow. Just making just making noise because they just they can't think of the words so they just like scuba 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 that's, right. That person was like, yeah, oh, what happened right there? Yeah. That ten year old yeah, kid that was like listening to the cast album on the way to the theater, he's like, Hold up. Yeah. That yeah, right. yeah. But yeah. 
Yeah, but there's a high enough percentage of audience that won't catch it, and uh, yeah, you'll be fine. But like I said, again, this is like rare. We, these people that I'm working with are top, top, top professionals, and you know, we're you know, before the show, we are all focused. You know, some pe- people focus in different ways. You know, we circle up. If you're not in the mood to circle up, and you're off in the corner praying on something, because yeah. we also have our lives all day. You know, you can't just shut your life off. Mm-hmm. But then you got to get in that theater and do your job. Right. Uh, like, like any other job. If there's yeah. any other show that you could work on right now that you're a big fan of, what would it be? <sighs> like on Broadway. Oh, I don't even really know what's happening. Well, nothing's happening right now. Um, what show would I want to work on? Actually, I'm going to I'm gonna change that question. Not not just on Broadway. Not even confined to this time. In theater history. Off on community. Just a show. Um... I mean, I don't know what part I would play, but I love this show called The Band's Visit. I love a show called yes. Passing Strange. The Passing Band's Strange. Visit. The mm. Band's Visit. Um, Passing Strange. It's a show that was out uh, about 10 years ago. Um, oh, mm, I like my show. It's called Clear. <laughs> so is that, that's your musical, right? Yeah, I mean, well, that's the answer I'm supposed to give, I think. You know, I yeah. want to work on my stuff. You should love your own work. I can't yeah. wait to see it. Just, I mean, whenever it happens, just let me know. I want to I wanna, yeah. I wanna fly out. That'd be yeah. dope. We, there's a podcast about it that's coming out in a few days that I did in Ireland um, yeah. about the performance we did in Ireland. And so then I did a podcast about it, and that's coming out, which has some excerpts of the music. That's awesome. Oh, so the show is done. It's out. Y'all are performing it. It's, it's not out, but we did this sort of uh, Zoom reading with oh, the music. Okay. The music is the music is recorded. Um, it, our Hamilton associate conductor, our Hamilton drummer, and another and a local bass player from Chicago, they played on it. Um, I used a couple of Hamilton singers and then some local Chicago people. Okay. Oh, so it's a nice lead. And and um, Chandra Hall Broomfield, who was our Hercules Mulligan, he is now. Um, he left the show, but now he's focused on his music career. So he mixed it in his studio. That's amazing. Cool. Can you give us a Can you give us a short synopsis on what Clear's about? Um, it's the, the short synopsis is uh, a guy who's trying to. He's a struggling musician, but half the reason he's struggling is because he's partying too much and mm. smoking, smoking weed and, and not really not really pursuing his dream but like right. working at a retail store and going to the bars and hanging out but he's living in New York so to him that just means you pursuing your dream yeah it's like no you know you're not you know and so his friend gets a job working in politics on a on a political campaign and can can get this dude on the campaign on the he can get him a spot on the team and next thing you know, he's traveling the country. Uh, what starts out just setting up chairs and helping out, he gets the passion for it, and the candidate notices him. She's a black woman running for president. Mm. And before he knows it, he's lifted up, and he's sort of recognizing his own power. And you know, na- you know, he, na- you know, he, he. he, he <clears throat> He names himself. You know what? Yeah. I, you know what I mean by that? Yeah, like he, he's he hasn't been living in his yeah. truth. Yeah. He finds and himself, sudden, yeah. He, he finds out acknowledging. He finds out who he really is because the pressure is on, and they end up in Africa, uh, in the slave castles of Ghana, where he sees what it's really about. What what he complains about being a black American. Yeah. He don't know the first thing about what it's mm. like to be black on this planet. Wow. And, and so he finds that out, and and it spurs him on to really seek his art. Mr. Paul, I mean, I'm sorry. Wow, uh, you really uh, want to get hung up on it. We went we so long. Paul, we <laughs> I am very happy you mentioned campaign and a, a black lady running for president because it almost, it did past my mind that you used to work like close to the Obamas. Am I correct? Yeah, I worked for the Obamas for seven years and that's the, 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 the functional part of the story of clear of the musical yeah. is loosely based on that time in my life and how I was living in New York and wow. working at a retail store. And I ended up on this campaign and I ended up on the other side of the world suddenly 
I feel like I should have asked you this question before the Lynn question. I mean, Lynn, you are my president. If you ever hear that, I doubt you ever will. But how was it working close to the first African-American president? I mean, there's there were so many unrealistic expectations put on that amazing man, which is Barack Obama. But how was that experience? Well, number one, I worked more on his wife's team, but I did work on his team for the first year, and then she sort of poached me over to her team, right. and it was almost more pressure on her because it was all about how she looks, mm. and which was so unfair when she's actually the more accomplished lawyer. She trained him, right. and he, he was the intern that she trained, mm. but that just says a lot about the patriarchy and how in every corner of this world, we don't give women the respect that they deserve Absolutely. but not that she's living in some kind of you know she's not like mad yeah. in the corner or anything but um uh what was it like it was you know it was good training for playing george washington i didn't know that at the time but they weren't the first uh president and first lady but they right. were a first president and first yes. lady they were the first black ones, so there was a firstness about them, and I could understand how they were sort of navigating new territory and everything they did, what it might have been like for George Washington trying to figure out what is this job that he's been told, asked to do. Now, of course, I wasn't thinking about all of that because there was no such thing as Hamilton when, when, we, when I first started with him. So I would just say that the main thing I learned was to be consistent, to not let the highs get too high, not let the lows get too low. From watching them, I learned that, you know, they, and, they, they, they knew. Never let yourself get too excited about a victory and don't get too down about the loss. Just keep moving forward right. with your goals. And I, I don't want to go too far into the political world, but with you being from Hamilton, it just seems, it just seems right to ask real questions. What was it like for you after working for them? Just that that greatest in the integrity that was, you know, at that at that stand at at that in that office, and to what we had next and the craziness that transpired. However you want to look at it, what was the shift that for you? I know the, the shift for America as, as a greater whole was crazy, but as someone who actually worked in the White House, what what's that transition of power like? Well, lucky for me, what I did was called advanced. So I wasn't day to day inside the White House. I would only do uh, my work was remote. Hmm. So when they traveled somewhere, I was on the team that would set up their travel away from the White House. Got you. So fortunately for me, I didn't have to deal with the pain of the transition in that manner. It was still painful for me to watch, but right. um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So so what I what I you know. Uh, you know, if anything thrust me back into my art, because I wasn't sure I was going to go back into writing and acting, I, I was kind of prepared to work for the next Democratic. You know, I thought Hillary was going to win, and I thought, or Bernie, you know, I was working for both of them at, at one point. So, yeah. at different times, uh, and I was just ready to kind of stick with that. I had a, I saw kind of a clear path to just keep doing that. Um, so, when that other thing happen i uh I, you know listen when things go uh when things go to the right or go south or go around the bend I in this world to the right. and, yes to the right yeah i actually didn't realize that was but, a play on words you know, good job paul that's what i'm shooting out here <laughs> yo I, I, listen to the positive tommy for that i was also not calling you mr paul he actually called you paul for once yes, I, I, did notice that. I did notice that i guess we had to just talk for long enough um <laughs> i think that artists really get activated when things get a little crazy in the world. So I got activated in my art when that happened. Awesome. So I'm not glad that it happened, but I absolutely, uh, you know, we all got fired up. Mm. Like we have to write, we have to dance, we have to sing, we have to act, we have to remind people that it's important because this, this, that creature will try to destroy us. Absolutely. And art, they will try to destroy art and artists. Yeah. Absolutely. Last five questions. These are speed questions. I want to try to do this at the end of every single oil podcast interview. Okay. This has nothing to do with your work or your art or anything. These are just personal day to day questions. And I want each of Isaac and Jeremiah, I want us to all give these five, like a, a random five. Burger okay. or pizza? Burger. Yeah. Movies or plays? 
Wait, 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 wait. Was that, mm, like, wait, is that a bad answer? What the hell? No, burgers are awesome. <laughs> yeah, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy seems a bit upset about that one. He's like, oh, okay. No, I love burgers. Oh, okay, I prefer man. burgers. <laughs> okay. Movies are, movies are plays. <laughs> uh, to see or to write? To see. To see. Oh, boy. I thought this was going to be, like, easy. Um, That's a hard one, Tommy. Uh, plays, plays, plays. New York or Chicago? Chicago. Mm, my mom's from Chicago. Caprini Green. Sit word up. Oh, okay. Number okay. four. This is this is this is the one. Aaron Aaron Burr or Hamilton? George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was gonna say that. I'm like, why should say why should say George Washington? Oh my yeah, god. And matinee or evening show? Uh evening. Why? Yeah. Mm. Well, you're definitely more warmed up. It's definitely the end of your work day. Because sometimes if you have a matinee, you know you have another show coming up. Right. Mm-hmm. So you you go into the matinee. You know, it's almost harder to do matinees because you got to get yourself up for it. Because you got to get yourself warmed up. And you sometimes the audience is not as uh, energetic as an evening show. Mm. Sometimes it's the people who are, yeah, it's just, yeah. Sometimes the energy from the audience is they not. Just, they just got out of church. They was like, oh, I'm yawning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, or not yawning, but they're just more chill. You know, the evening show, people got yeah. dressed up. They went to dinner. They had a little cocktail. Yeah, they are yeah. ready. They are hype. They are hype, man. They're ready. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're ready. They're going out afterwards. You know, yeah. So it's I'm just sorry. a different energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got five questions? I do. Um, they will not be as um, the one or the other as Tommy was. So. Um <laughs> Okay. What is your favorite number? Thirteen. Thirteen. What? That's my favorite number. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, is it really? <laughs> yes. Why is it What's your, your favorite? favorite color? Um, it's my favorite number simply because um something happened to me. Um, it was the thirteenth of. December. Puberty, ha- puberty you know, happened at thirteen, Jeremiah. No, yes. it was it was the, it was the thirteenth of, of December. Something something like. Mind blowing happened to me. So I was like, okay, this is my favorite number. That happened when I was like 12. That's, that's, that's my favorite number for the rest of my life. And I promise that. And it's been my favorite number. That's amazing. It's my favorite number so that, because, because they made it an unlucky number because it was the, it was the most important number in the Wiccan pagan female calendar. Mm. A lot of the things, a lot of the things that have been made unlucky like black cats and stuff yeah. mm-hmm. were things that were cherished by female societies. So they just like, they make Friday 13th into this scary day where really they just do it. Cause they're trying to they make you afraid of women and right. menstrual cycles and blood. And it's just ridiculous. So I'm, I'm all for 13. I like how Mr. Paul had, I mean, I like how Paul had a deep, deep, deep answer. <laughs> Like, and then <laughs> Jim and I were just like, yeah, I like that team. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I like their team because something happened. That's about it. Hey, hey, but, you know, whatever floats, whatever gets you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question number two. Um, question number two. Uh, yeah. What's your favorite color? Uh, oof, oof. Uh, green. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's life, you know, it's life. life. It's, it's trees, it's life, it's it's money. Yeah. It's, it's, it's money. Yes, I, it like is. Have, okay. I like how you just have such a deep answer for every single thing you were asking the dumbest money. questions. You just have such a deep answer to it. <laughs> he, he's George Washington. He can't help it. Come on. <laughs> I'm just, you know, it's true, though. Okay, go ahead. Um, If you do favorite instrument to play. Oh, you know what? Just the, uh, in Ireland, I got a lesson playing uh, the, Ool- the Ulian pipes, or they're, they're pronounced Ulian, oh, but it's spelled Ulian. So U I, let me see, U I L L E A N. It might be two N's. U I L L E A N. Ulian pipes. You have to pump the air through the bag on one side with your right on the right side, and you just constantly have to pump it like like if your foot's going up and down on a pedal and you're, you're just or you're squeezing the air and then on your left side you're so that 
pump is filling the bag on the left side and you're slowly pressing it down with the left hand and that's what's pushing the air through and then your fingers are on oh, this, wow. flute, this flute type thing uh but there's double reeds all put in like an oboe and then this uh, it's just a crazy instrument. You feel like you have an alien baby on your lap. Wow. <laughs> and um, I got a lesson on it, and it's just my new favorite thing. Just like the effort, the effort it takes to even make a sound out of that thing is crazy. That's awesome. Bad. Well, I'm not gonna lie. Number three. <laughs> number three. Uh, wait. Um. Wait. Isn't this number four? This is number four. Yeah. Number four. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. messing up the the, the commandments. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So, uh, hypothetical, all right, right here. You're on your way to, let's say, one of your friend's weddings, right? Okay. You have an option between a tuxedo, right, black, complete black tuxedo, or this, this like, tux-ish, like a dress shirt, a vest, and just some black, you know? Which mm. one would you choose? Oh, a uh, tux. I, I but, like to dress up. Oh, my, my answer, used, my answer used to would be the casual thing, but I, I just kind of like dressing up, so I would I would wear the tux. As long as, oh, okay. it doesn't steal, as long as it doesn't steal away from the groom, you know. I don't know what that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. final question. Um, hold on. Um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, um. Let's say, like, you know, brands and stuff. People love brands and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, what's your favorite brand of, I guess, shoes? What's your shoes? What's your favorite brand of shoes? Oh. I'm just going to, I have to, I, I'm an Adidas person. Mm. Adidas. Yes. Oh. Um, Adidas. Um, Adidas jumpers, Adidas yeah, sweats. I'm Adidas. I'm Adidas. Yes. And I play a lot. Of, I play a lot of tennis. So if you would, uh, I, I would have said like, like my favorite tennis racket. But they usually the tennis rackets don't make shoes as well. But so yeah, I go Adidas. Isaac, your turn. All right, all right. White Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> the Oreo that's Isaac. Gonna be, that's, that's, Wilson, that's always going to be stuck in my head. I'm going to go around there and be like, so what's your name? I'm White Isaac now? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, George Washington, Washington called me that. George Washington called me that. The black, the White black Isaac, George so. Washington called me that. <laughs> oh, I'm the White Isaac. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, I'm going to search it. Are you a Coke or a Pepsi type of guy? Ooh. Uh, neither, but if I had to choose, I would drink Coca-Cola. Mm. Okay. But I don't really drink soda, so... Yeah, I was wondering if you didn't drink any at all. It's all just, right. And it, you know what? It is just because of the voice and because of, you know, yeah. the sugar. I, I, so I used to, I used to, but since Hamilton, I just had to stop. All right. So this is also going on the lines, I guess. Are you a cat or a dog person, I guess? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm a dog person. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm dogs. a dog person. I love, I love cats, too, but I'm more of a dog person. You personally, like going on taking a nice long car trips or like taking a nice quick flight somewhere a uh, quick flight if I, if I a long flight any flight I, 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 any flight I, I would really <laughs> want to make sure that I cleared that up when I was like getting on a plane full of the I, I meant just traveling with the whole group that's yeah. what I don't like to do on my day off I really love to travel <laughs> I would not have even come back to Chicago if I didn't have to come back because the visa ran out. Right. I love flying around. So, plane, putting me on a plane anywhere. Long plane, short plane, right? Yes. Awesome. All right. I was going to know, what's your favorite restaurant? Mm. To be any restaurant. Like, what's your favorite one to just go and eat at? or mm. Like, what's been, the, like, your favorite one? Wow, in my life? Wow. <laughs> you got me. Uh, oh, you know what? You know what? This, okay, for many reasons, but most because it was the one that when I came, when I was in college, to me, it was a fancy restaurant. To me, when I saved money for my, because I had to work two jobs while I was in college, and when I felt like I had enough money that I could go and, you know, and so, when, and then when I got older and I, and I went into the place and I realized, like, oh, it 
isn't as fancy as I or, 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 no, 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 I don't mean to say that. I mean, like, my life had led me to where I have eaten in some crazy expensive places. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. All mm-hmm. over the world. But I would still go in there and be like, I, I love the feeling I have when I go in here. It's a little Mexican place called Fiesta Mexicana in, um, although a really nice neighborhood in Chicago called Lincoln Park. Love Lincoln uh-huh. Park. And, and it's just lovely, the feeling of home. Even all these years later when I come in, the owner sees me and he's like, oh, my God, that's that college kid that used to come in here. And now he's George Washington. And I'm like, he yeah. just, he, he knows. They're, they're like, that's the guy that used to call our restaurant fancy. Oh, my God. <laughs> and they would let me sit in the corner with my friends, even when we didn't have a lot of money and we would be taking up the tape. Like, he would let and let us be there. And so there, I will always go there. And, and the food is great. Like, but, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Last question. All right, cause you said, you've been to some like crazy places. You said I ate at some like crazy restaurants. What's the most exotic thing you've ever had? Like the most strange, I guess you could say. Because uh, I know there's some strange stuff out there. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> I've had I've had snake. I've oh. had. Uh, I've had uh, an octopus, of course. Um, I've had um, I've had chocolate covered ants. Wow! Oh wow! Uh, Why? Yeah, what, grass what makes upper. you feel like that's going to be good? Is it just like curiosity? <laughs> um, I didn't necessarily think it was going to be good, but I was in a situation where I <laughs> needed to try it because everybody else was trying it. Oh. I was. Was it like with the cast? No, I was in a foreign country on a trip, and we were, um, you yeah, know, we were just in a place where, as a group, when you are invited somewhere and they offer you this, I you, respect. I mean, so I, now, and some people on the, on the team did not do it, but I was like, I'm doing it. When am I ever going to get this opportunity again? Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think also in Turkey, I had some some um, alcohol called Reiki or Rocky. I can't remember what it's called. Mm. Oh, wow. It was like gasoline. I was like, whoa. And yeah. you're like, whoa, hold up. <laughs> and then I was like, give me, and then I was like, whoa, okay, give me some more. <laughs> yes. And then I don't remember much of the rest of the night. But. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, our last thing for the night. Thank you so much for coming, Mr. Po- uh, uh, George Washington. Oh, no this last, this isn't a question, more so a request. I want to, I want to be able to say that I've done this. Can we, can we all, all four seeing that everyone will sit under their own vine? Just that, that line and fig tree. I just want to be able to say that I've done this in life. I'm not warmed up, but, um, okay. Wow. Neither are we. Neither are we. Holly wants this so bad. I want this so bad. Why don't you start? And I'll see what pitch you start at. And I'll try. Is everybody going to do it or just me and Tommy? Everybody can do it. I just want to do it with, with you, George. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I want to call me this moment. I understand. Boy, you have, this moment. Mr. George Washington, you have to understand, when I go back to the community theater down here, this will be the bragging right of, like... Yeah, yeah like, like, you, like, you don't understand this. This is such a bragging right. This is going right down on my audition <laughs> on my audition paper right here. Same with okay. Hamilton Star. All right, I'll start us okay. off. Here it is. Smile audition, Lynn. Find this. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I'm trying to get ready. I'm trying to find some water. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Everyone shall sit under their own vine, their own vine and fig tree, tree, and no one shall no make them afraid. afraid. They'll, They'll be safe in the nation, nation we live. I'm going to let you finish Very it good. off. I want to sit under my own vine and fig tree, mm. a moment alone in the shade. And home in this nation we made. Mr. Paul, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate you. You're about thank to get you hung up on. on. You're about to get hung up on. We please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. It was great. All right, no problem, bro. Absolutely. Take See you, Paul. Bye. Take care. Bye, bye.